Just when you think you've seen everything, eh? Nasty one, too. Headwinds usually are. Handgun, I reckon. Right in the back of the head. Here one day, everywhere the next. Wayne, are you feeling a little bit squeamish? No, of course not. I was just wondering, all that incessant chatter. Sound like a nervous train at his first crime scene. Look. Senior Constable Schultz. No, 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 he's still, I don't know when he's going. Well, then look after them when they arrive. Yeah, well, look, mate, we've got a body here for you. Yeah, gunshot. Yeah, boss wants to have you as quick as possible. All right, cheers. Thomas Otter on their way. Right, so that's PJ. Who are they sending from the city? Well, they're not sure. It looks like overtime for you tonight. Oh, it's all right, I don't mind. Bit of bad luck, you first go running the place and it's mayhem. No, I'll be right. I'll be right. Well, be good experience for you, I suppose. Yeah, best way to learn, I reckon. Well, it's best to have something to keep you busy. It's been as quiet as a church around here, all week. Oh, Hey, boss, there's another fight at the pub. Police, break it up. Right, Oaks. Break it up. I said break it up. Coppers, back off. Go off me. I said back off. I'll have you, Mate, not anybody. Try it. Come on. Have a go. <clears throat> Couldn't do it on your own. Could you? That's enough. You've had your chance. Constable. What do you got, Max? He's down here. Any sign of a gun? We haven't found one. Not with a body anyway. Oh, nasty. Back ahead. Could be a professional job. Check for a wallet. We leave that to forensic, you know that. Come on, Max. Yeah, OK, look, there's nothing in his shirt pockets, but I haven't turned him over yet. Oh, and uh, there's this. It looks like some type of hair. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it up to forensic. Oh, good day, how are you? Uh, yeah, there's all clear. No wallet. It's all yours. Who found him? Would you believe some guy buying a pizza? It would put you off your marinara, wouldn't it? I don't care who they work for, Mr Lang, they are creating a nuisance in a public place. They was just having a bit of fun. Well, we can do without that sort of fun around here. Charge them, Nick. Uh, what have I vouched for them? Look, I've got a shearing contract. Give us a break, Sergeant. I've got a big mob of sheep to get through tomorrow. Well, if they make bail, they'll be free to work. And what if they don't make bail? How much longer are you going to be in the district? End of the week. Then we're up north. Well, they'll do what you say. If they want work, they will. How about it? Well, it's not my call, Mr Lang. Senior Constable Schultz is in charge, but it's my guess they'll be seeing the inside of the lock-up until the pub closes at the very least. All right, lads. This way to the Mount Thomas Hilton. Come on. Down here. Adam, as soon as you finish there, you better go out and give Constable Doyle a hand with traffic control. Yeah, right, boss. And I don't want any more trouble. No second chances, all right? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, thanks. Boss sent me out to help. Well, there's not much to do. Hey, mate, you ever seen a headshot before? Wayne. <laughs> well, now's your big chance. I suppose I have to. You have to report to PJ. And he's down there where the body is. Adam, what'd you have for dinner? You didn't have to do that. No, Maggie, I didn't have to. Uh, the boss told me to come out here and help you. Yeah, right, mate. He, he asked me to tell you homicide are on their way. Listen, Adam, do you, um... Move my car. Get the roadblock out of the way. Yeah. Good on you. Now make sure the filing's up to date and try and keep your big feet off my desk. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, if there are any problems, any problems at all, I want you to call me, all right? All right. All right. Well, that's... Stroller's daughter decides to get married. I've got to drop everything. I don't suppose you know anything about this stuff. I don't no. suppose Doyle's back no, either. Cooper, come in here and give me a hand! No, he's... 
this out and patrol well, I'll just stick your big finger on well, here. Well, just don't tie it to the All bottom. right, all right. Just, just... Okay. All right. Now, I want you to stay on their good side. Give them anything okay. they want. No worries. As soon as I get here, I'll, uh, I'll take them into the scene. Good on. Boss, I'm still here. Well, I'm just going, reluctantly. What's the news? Uh, one shot back of the head. Well, sounds professional. Well, there's nothing domestic about it. Homicide on their way. Ah, uh, you know who this is, not you? Good evening. <laughs> Detective Ryan. Sergeant. Detective Scarlatti. Hey, Jack. Oh, yeah. Sure. You're both back a bit sooner than we expected. Oh, we just go where the business sends us, Sergeant. Yes, yes, so do I. And uh, I'm due at St David's, relieving for the next few days. Uh, Senior Constable Schultz will be in charge here while I'm gone. I'm sure there won't be a problem dealing with him. Will there, Nick? No, no. He's the best you can do, Sergeant. The very best. PJ, why don't you take our uh, friends here out to see the body? Mm-hmm. Yep. OK, um, you want to follow me? <clears throat> We'll work together real close. Won't we, Nick? If you're going to have a problem working with them, then I think you should tell me about it right now. No, I can handle it. I hope you can. Because they're going to be right on your wheel, hoping like crazy you'll do something stupid. And if you do, they will roll right over the top of you and they don't care if they take you down. Now you wait a minute. They stuffed up last time, not yeah, me. I know that, and you know that. But don't stand around waiting for them to apologise because they won't. Yeah, well, they're too busy accusing innocent police. Look, if you're going to dredge that up again, then you're not the person I should be leaving in yeah, charge all right. here. All right, I can handle it, all right? Kid gloves. Yep, absolutely. Look, I can handle them. I can handle the job, OK? Good. I hope you can. Because I don't want to be the one that has to come back here and clean up the mess. I reckon he was dead before they dumped him here. Not enough blood. Not for a headshot. So you reckon it was the headshot that killed him? Can we flip him? There's no other obvious wounds. Not that we can see. We'll have to wait for the post-mortem. There's no time to do much now. First thing in the morning, PJ, I want a complete line search right through Nick's here. Nick's got that organised, Bridget. Oh. Yeah, OK. You got anyone that can watch over the place tonight? Yeah, well, two blokes isn't going to be enough. Because it's a line search, mate, and two blokes don't have much of a line, do they? No, 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 come on, don't get like that. No, no, of course I'll have them, yeah. Yeah, first thing in the morning, very good of you. Cheers. So... Acting Sergeant, how many bodies have we got for this line search? Well, I'm um, still putting it together, actually, Detective. That's not what I asked. All right. Well, you'll have enough, all right? How many's enough? Well, I would have thought at least 20. What do you think, Gino? 20 for a line search? Yeah, 20. 25, to be sure. Well, I'm still putting it together, as I said to you. And I want to know how many. There's eight. What? Including you and your mate there. You've got to be joking. Eight. Are you sure you're up to this job? No, this isn't the city. I just can't pull numbers out of it's a hat. It's your job to find the numbers. I want 20 if you have to get the rest out of retirement. Yeah, all right. <coughs> I'll, um, I'll ring up the SES for you. 20. You're going to get what I give you, all right? It's OK, mate. Right, yeah, I've, um, I've booked you into the motel too. You booked us into the dog box for me. If you need us, we'll be at the Imperial. Twenty. <clears throat> what are you two looking at? Uh, nothing. Good. Good on you. Well, you're going to be relieving Adam first thing in the morning. You got that? Sure. Good. Bob, how are you, mate? Yes, it's Nick Schultz here. Yeah, I'm just after a couple of blokes for a line search.
to that. Well, I'm very sorry to wake you. It freaked me out for the second time this morning. Uh, who was at the first? I don't know, some guy in a car. He tried to knock me down. I'm pretty sure it was a ute. Uh, I called St David's for backup and they sent it out, but it was too late by the time they got here, he was gone. Well, it sounds like an exciting night. <sighs> Tell me about it. At one point I jumped out because I heard a strange noise and I pulled my gun it turned out to be a cow. Hmm. Here's the country, Adam. What do you expect? Yeah, but Mags, it was walking down the middle of the road. So did you book it? <sighs> Crazy night. Cows, wombats, feral cats. Now tell me about this mystery vehicle. What have you got? Not much. Not even a registration number? Well, no. I mean, it was too dark. It happened too quickly. A light sedan or a ute. I can't believe this. And why didn't you give choice? Oh, kid, real. What's he going to do? Run down a car that's got to You should have had backup out there. Well, there wasn't any backup out there. Because I had, to, I had to juggle the bloody rosters to get you the people for your line search you wanted. You can't have it both ways. Post-mortem results are in. Head shot was a cause of death, no other wounds. Fingerprints? No, nope, nothing on record. No ID, no fingerprints, no face. We got anything? No, there's a bit of hair we found on his trousers, but... Uh, Let's go for a general description, then height, weight, hair colour. The super can turn up with the door knock and the line search. Oh. 20 people, right? 14's as good as you're going to get. Oh, come on, PJ. What is it with this bloke? Ten minutes in the chair and suddenly he's Hitler. He's doing his best. His best isn't good enough. This is his first time in the job, all right? You've got to make allowances. Oh, oh we haven't got time for allowances. Somewhere out there, there's a murderer. And the longer we leave it, the colder the trail's going to get. Look, PJ, if we can't even trust him to organise a line search... Huh? What's going to happen further down the track? Hang on, this is not the city, all right? We don't have the manpower here. How understand? many allowances do you want us to make? He's a good police officer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you now, if this keeps going any longer, no amount of mateship will get Schultz off the hook. <laughs> Constable, backtrack, check along the fence line. I looked there yesterday, there's nothing there. Then check again. Senior Detective Gino Scarletti, Homicide Squad, Mr... Mr Wade, isn't it? No, I've seen you around. Yeah, Constable Doyle. Mr Wade, you've probably heard about the shooting we had... I don't know anything about it. You might have seen something. Heard something? Not that I recollect. But if I remember anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, you do that, Mr. Wade. Over here. Sitting on top of the grass. Lucky you looked again, Constable. Is there a locksmith in town? Vic Gordon over on Main Street. I'll take it over there if you like. Please, thanks very much. Any other leads? Uh, um, forensic, if I identify the fibres, they're wool and unprocessed. Well, he's not a shearer. His hands are too soft. Well, I grew up on a sheep farm. Well, he might be a classer or a oh, buyer or something. Be. Well, I'll just think, seeing as the shearers are in town, we might be yeah, worth well, a maybe look. there's some other way we can check it out, eh? <clears throat> well, it's shearing season. There must be hundreds of shearers in the district. Could we stick to the key? Yeah, well, let's take the key down to the locksmith and uh, see what we can find. No. Out. No, there's no need to. It's a railway locker key. Funny that. Just like I said it would. Be warm and metal. No ID on the clothes. Nope. Any papers or letters? Not a thing. A few clothes and some old medals. The Defence Department must keep records. Yeah, World War II, by the look of them. Well, the victim wasn't that old. Could take days to have them traced. Break it down. I'm not that old. I served in Vietnam, not World War II. Well, you must know something about medals, boss. Look, you've got your two basic types. You've got your service and campaign medals, which everybody got. Then you've got your medals for valour, which you got if you did something really brave. So how do I tell the difference? Well, the valour medals are usually bigger and better. What, what have you got there? Is it a cross or is it round or what? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's round, it's round. What? Have a look around the rim. It, it should have a serial number and a name. Yeah, here we go. QX. Yeah, well, that's Q for Queensland, X for Expeditionary Force. Right. And then there's a number. Yeah, well, that's the serial number I told you about. Everybody got one of those. Right. 
Corporal A.F. Stoddard. Looks like we've got ourselves a name at last. Yeah, well, thanks, boss. I hope that's the break we're looking for. Yeah, good. Good. Hey, listen, how are you getting on with those two mongrels from Melbourne? Well, fine. What? Nick? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, it's not exactly his fault, boss. What isn't his fault? Well, you know, there's a bit of history there, you know what I mean? What exactly is going on? Look, boss, i got to go over. I've got things to do. Yeah, all right. Well, listen, if it looks like there's going to be a bust-up, get onto the blower to me straight away, will you? Yeah, 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 yeah. See ya. No worries. I want him booked. Uh, Mrs Carmichael, isn't it? The cheek of some people. Which people, Mrs Carmichael? The ones that park their cars in the spaces for the disabled. Oh, so someone's parking their car illegally in the disabled space, are and they? I'm not leaving here until he's booked. Nick. Yep. Uh, Mrs Carmichael has a problem with a car being parked in a oh, disabled yeah. space. Well, can't you go find another well, park? That's not the point, young man. The law is being broken and it's your responsibility to do something about it. And um. if you don't... Then I'll be asking Tommy Croydon, why not? Uh, Constable Patterson, do you want to uh, have a chat to Mrs Carmichael about an illegally parked vehicle? Uh, have a look, see if it's um, still there. <coughs> Book it. Now, Mrs Carmichael, exactly where was this car parked? I don't believe this. We are in the middle of a murder investigation and you're pulling men away to write traffic tickets? You listen to me. While I'm acting Sergeant Detective Ryan, it's my station and it's my call. It's a bloody traffic infringement. <laughs> that woman out there has got as much right to expect protection from the law as anyone else has. You got that? Thanks very much, Tap. Bridget. What have we got? Well, that was the Defence Department. Now, Stoddard was a volunteer who served in a battalion raised out of Brisbane, 1942. Okay. Get onto the Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages in Queensland. Yeah. Uh, check out Brisbane first, see what they can turn up. Oh, and get onto Brisbane CI. Um, get them to run that name through their computer. Now, if he hasn't got a record, maybe he's got an outstanding parking fine that'll give us an address. Parking fines. Here we are, PJs. They've just been faxed through by Queensland CI. Oh, they've got their skates on, eh? Oh, word they have. Now, according to this, Stoddard died in 1981. Got one son, Barry Arthur Stoddard. He's wanted for murder of Alison Jane Evans here, so... That's... So he's wanted for murder, but his fingerprints aren't on record. Get on the phone, PJ. Talk to the investigating officer, milk him. We want everything he knows about this case and this Stoddard right. character. So you reckon it's Stoddard's body? It's the best we've got at the moment. Wanted for murder, goes on the run. Well, maybe not from the police. Oh, maybe someone connected with the Evans woman. Yeah, could give us a suspect. Mm. Let's get on to it, eh? Now, I want a photo and description and anything else they've got that might help us ID him. And I want to do another door knock. In town this time, the hotel and the shops. See if we can positively establish that he's been here. Now, I, I don't want to hear how it yeah. can't be done. Just get me some manpower here in half an hour's time for the briefing. 20. Who are we waiting on? Ah, uh, Constables Patterson and Cooper. Oh, sorry, I've got to ask um, I Sorry, I have to wake you up, mate. Let's just get on with it, shall we? OK, listen up. We found out that this bloke, Evans, first name Dean, went over the edge when his wife was murdered. Psychiatric treatment that works. He spent the last three years trying to track Stoddard. And maybe last night he finally caught up with him. We've got a description of Stoddard and a bad copy of an old photo. Prior to the murder, he wasn't known to police, so there were no prints on record. So we start talking to people in town. See if we can positively establish that he's been here in Mount Thomas in the last few days. Then we start looking for evidence. Do we have a description? No, not yet. We're still working on it. Where have you been? Running tickets. In a sandwich shop? Yeah, just stop. You listen to me. Lunch. You want to have a go at some. You have a go at me. You leave him alone. Catch up. 
I was just going to run this through on the computer. You I'll can do wait. It. I'll do it, I'll do it. Yeah, you do it. So tell me, when does Sergeant Croydon get back? Ever seen him before? You'd be joking. All oh, right, all right, it's not a great photo. From closing time, half the blokes in the bar look like this, blurry and out of focus. What's he done? Might have got himself killed. I'm going to circulate. Maybe someone remembers him. The only thing these blokes remember is whose shout it is. Even that can get a bit selective at times. Well, it's one way to let off steam, I suppose. Sorry, I didn't, uh, didn't hear you there, boss. Personally, I always prefer to kick something. Yes, yeah, so you just happened to be passing, did you? Just something like that. Yeah. So how's it going? <laughs> Wonderful. I didn't think. I see. Nick, hmm? sometimes it's better to swallow your pride, sit back and make like a Buddhist monk. Sorry? Practice the art of patience. Well, I'm a very patient bloke, you know. And always make sure all your leads are plugged all the way in. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Thanks. That's all right, you know me. Specialise in helping out. Oh, that's it, yeah. Also, I'm a very good listener. Good on you. Um, Nick. Uh, boss, could you just give me that book, please, on the front counter? Traffic infringements. I wouldn't bother chasing this one too hard. Uh, no. Queensland Rego. He'll never pay up. Queensland? Wait. Huh. Queensland killer, Queensland body, Queensland car dumped at the railway station. Unbelievable. You better start spreading the news. Paige? Yep. You. Thanks, Chrissy. Anyone recognise him? No, but half of them didn't understand the question, though. Oh, they're my customers you're talking about, thanks. Hey, listen, you don't know anyone who drives a grey ute, do you? Yeah, Tony Peterson does. Joe Hadley, when he washes it. No, I mean strangers. Well, those shearers the other day were driving a grey ute. Well, they? Right, they're onto something. Let's go. Thanks, Chrissy. Bring a decent photo next time, will you? Mm -hmm. Hey, PJ, that grey ute that nearly knocked me down. Uh, Chris reckons those shearers we brought in the other day have got one. Ah, so it's a grey ute now, is it? Your memory's improving, matey. And this was yesterday morning? The train was just about to leave. The Melbourne train? Single, one way. Yeah, can you describe it? Yeah, sort of average, you know. So, are you born stupid or have you had to practice it? I didn't know. You would have if you'd been at the briefing. This bloke's got the jump on us because of your sloppy police work. You better hope we catch him. All right, thanks, VKC received. The car's registered in the name of Dean Evans. He's been here how long? Good work, Nicky. Gino! I'm going steady on. No, I'm telling you, those two keep it up, I'm going to go them. Her first. Oh, that'd look great on your record of service, wouldn't it? She deserves it. And he's not far behind her. They both come in with an attitude. Well, they've certainly got it against Nick. Do you know that they didn't even apologise to him for last time? Mind you, he's not helping himself very much either, Wayne. Nah, I think he's going to lay one on her this afternoon. <laughs> Bloody city D's think they know everything. They already think they've got this thing wrapped up. Mm. They still haven't caught Evans. He could be anywhere by now. And they haven't explained the wool fibres. If this guy's not a shearer, then what was it doing on him? Well, don't ask those two. If it doesn't fit their plan, it doesn't exist. I'm going to tell you, though. One day, someone's going to have a shot at them. Yeah, OK, so we've got some wool fibres. Maybe he's thought I did do a bit of shearing. What does it matter? I mean, for all we know, the fibres could have come from Evans when he moved the body. There's a thousand possible explanations for it, and in the end, it'll probably mean stuff all. Uh, Detective, that grey ute that nearly knocked me down at me... Sightseers. I'm pretty sure one of the shearers owns one. Oh, yeah, OK, which one? I don't know that yet. Look, whoever it was was taking a shortcut home. When he did close down a road, there's always some idiot that doesn't think it applies to him. Yeah, but I mean... Look, if you clocked his plates, we may have somewhere to take this. But you didn't, so we haven't. Next time, try to remember the important things, Junior Constable. Look, Bridget's meeting me down at the pub. Uh, come on, I'll buy you a beer. It's a good result. Hang on, hang on. Even without Evans? We've got a name for the body. A motive for the murder. A murder weapon and a suspect. <laughs> That's not a bad day's work. 
Are you coming? Yeah, sure. Uh, two light beers and a Chardonnay, thanks, mate. Sex is like They're all the same, eh? Now, you're the only one here, aren't you, Cooper? There's no one else. Yeah, no, they've all gone in the pub. All right, all right. Well, what do you think, Adam, about this business? What? Well, there's something not quite right about it, is there? Hey, I mean, you, know, you chase a bloke for years and years and years, and you, you, know, you catch him, and you do him in, and you dump him in the boot of your car, but instead of hiding the body, you go dump it in a place where it's bound to be found. And then you take all his ID off him. Yeah, well, Evans didn't want Stoddard identified. That makes sense. No, well, why would you abandon the car in such an obvious place? I mean, now, wouldn't you want to go and hide it? I mean, in another city or in a state, maybe? There's the locker key. I mean, why didn't we find that the first time we searched? Listen, Nick, I checked on that grey ute, and one of the shearers does own one. Haley, the guy I grappled at the pub the other night. Now, look, I checked, and he's got a record, a couple of assaults. What do you think? No, oh, mate, I think we're missing something, but I don't know what it is. What are you doing, you Sesh? I was beginning to think you'd forgotten. You have forgotten, haven't you? Dinner tonight? No. No, I... I know I... Well, I have. No, the day. Shocking. Loser. Forget mm. about it. It was terrible, isn't it? Dog of a day. No. Absolute dog. Poor Nick. Mm. <laughs> no. Great. Great. How are you going? Good? <laughs> Not interrupting anything, am I? No, no. no, no I was, I was just leaving, Tom. I'll, um, I'll see you at the pub. Yes, okay. see you down there. Love uh, dinner. Fantastic. Good. Good. I've uh, just come from the pub myself. Good for you. Had a bit of a chat with uh, Detective Constable Ryan, or rather, she had a bit of a chat with me. All right, was it an official chat or one that was off the record? Oh, it was off the record, like this. And you believed everything she had to say to you, did you? Not necessarily. But I know how pig-headed you can be when things don't go your way. And I told you I wanted total cooperation on this. You let me tell you something. They came in here, they took every resource I had away from me. They couldn't give two figs about community police. Stop making excuses and answer the phone. No excuse. Hello, uh, Mount Thomas Police. All right, all right, we'll be right down there. I'll get down the pub. Right. Why? What's going on? No, I'll tell you on the way. Come on. Now, see, the trouble with you city Ds is you're soft. You've got no guts. Wayne, this really isn't a good time. You two wouldn't last a week out on the street. This is what passes for entertainment for you. Is oh, you think you can come up here and push us poor, dumb country cops around? Well, some of us push back. Are you inviting me outside so yeah. you can take you a swing at me? Oh, well, you're on their team now, Wayne, are you? let's go. Now, which one of you two wants to come out the back and play, hey? Do you want to come? Come on. Come on, that's, come on, that's come enough. Have to go. Sorry about that. You've got a few problems, Sergeant. Serious problems. Listen, Wayne's not a bad cop. He just gets a bit emotional. You want to tell that to AID? There's no need for this to go any further. You don't have to report him. Not this time. Right. So, it's my shout. Nothing for me, thanks. Better get back, pick up this character's trail. You've got a few wild ones there, Tom. Better keep a tight rein on them or someone else might just take the reins from you. <clears throat> what are you trying to do? Wreck your own career and mine in the one night? They had it coming. Dishing it out in a pub brawl is not the way. What are you going to do? Punch their lights out or something? You're a bloody idiot, Wayne. He's only following your lead. They've gone. They're not going to report him, are they? But nobody's going to report anybody, and that goes for you, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. Oh. I thought you handled it very well. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Should never have happened, though. Nick, I don't think you've met my uncle, Frank Wade. No. He's got a farm out of town. Hi, Mr. Wade. Frank, good to meet you. Nice to see that Sasha's got a soft, reliable sort of bloke. Yeah, uh, well, it's me all right, isn't it? <laughs> uncle Frank asked to meet you, Nick. He's got some information you might be interested in. Uh, what about Frank? 
That poor bloke that got dumped near my place the other night. Go on. I wouldn't waste my time telling that city copper. No, mate, that's a good move. Now you tell me what it is you know. He remembers the car, the Queensland plates, the lot. He's gave me a description of it. It's on my desk. Right, here, oh, right. So, all right. So, what did this bloke sit say? Sit down, sit down, and I'll tell you again. Now, look, mate. He goes out to Frank Wade's farm and he starts asking him about this gang of shearers. They were Lang's gang. He was trying to track them down. That is all he said to Frank Wade. Well, none of Lang's shearers have been reported oh, missing. Mate. All right, all right. I'll check it out. I'll talk to Wade. Now, if it checks out, I'll pass it on to Ryan. You no. She, what, she's going to do nothing with Nick, it. Nick, listen to me. It is her case, all right? It's her case. She doesn't want any help from me. She'll stick it in the drawer and forget about it. All right, all right. So what if he was looking for a shearer? He found one, didn't he? He found one. The fibres on that bloke's trousers were wool. Yeah, which he could have picked up at Wade's place. Nick, you've gone too far. It's not possible. Adam! What? Come here. What have I done? Nothing, mate, nothing. You tell him about your grey you. No, no, no I don't, don't want to hear about the grey you. Shut up. Look, I've been doing some more checking, and as far as I can find out, there were four in the district at the time. Now, Joe Hadley, the plumber's got one. One was in for an engine rebuild. Oh, come on, mate. Cut to the chase, will you? Yeah, all right. The Peterson kid's got one, but he was in Melbourne, and uh, one of those shearers has hey, got hang one. Hang on, hang on. Now, which shearer? Hayley. The one that nearly killed him in the pub. I mean, he's got a record for assault. Two. Yeah. Now, come on. What more do you need? Nick. We cannot go blundering into a homicide investigation. Do you understand? <laughs> well, you don't have to. He nearly got run over by a grey ute the other night. It's a traffic matter. Nothing to do with homicide. You're going to do it anyway, aren't you? <sighs> oh, it's your neck. Well done. Well done, mate. Well done. Moment, Mr. Lang. Can't wait till lunch. No, I want to speak to one of your steerers, Matt Haley. Coco! Haley! Get over here. Funny how you can smell pigs even in a shearing shed, eh, Des? You and that grey ute outside, mate? Yeah. Well, your grey ute's been identified as a vehicle reported at the scene of a murder in Mount Thomas, not before last. It nearly ran down one of our officers. Crap. You were in custody. You were released at 10.30. Where'd you go after that? I'd had a skinful, so the boss here drove the ute back. Yeah, what about later, around 1.15? No way. I was still sleeping it off. If he says... You tell me about Dean Evans. Never heard of him. He drove a dark blue HK sedan. Queensland plates. You ever see it? No. Did it have a hard top? Yeah, it did. Yeah. I saw it. Of the morning, early. Bloody near crashed into me. Rodeo, where was it? Outside the railway station. Cut across in front of me. Did you see the driver? Yeah. <laughs> Must have had a train to catch. He was in a real hurry. What did he look like? Tall bloke. Rough looking type. Uh, sort of brown hair. Kind of broad nose. Uh, red face. Round about my age, I guess. Is that him? Yeah. That's him, all right. Well? Well, I drew a blank with Haley and... <laughs> Foreman Lang comes up to me and he says he saw Evans at the station yesterday. Got a clear look at him. Identified him from that photo. Right, so that counts out the shearing theory, then? <sighs> no, no, something doesn't fit. It fits, mate. Ryan's theory, not yours. It confirms everything. Evans kills Stoddart, dumps the body. Next morning, he goes to the railway station, hops on a train to Melbourne. Lang has identified Evans as the murderer. Admit it, Nick. Admit it, she's right. No, it doesn't fit. What? Oh, I don't know. Something doesn't fit. I told you everything I could remember. Yeah, I know you did, Bernie. Thanks for coming in again, mate. Now, just have a bit of a think about this bloke who bought the tickets, OK? Just picture him in your mind's eye, and you describe him to me. Brown sort of hair, thin in the face, mid-forties. Was he tall? Nah, not tall. Average. Well, a bit smaller, maybe. What's average height? Well, my height. I mean, this bloke didn't even come up to the top of the window, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, all right, mate. Now, Bernie, how tall are you? 180. Hey! Hey! What? How tall's Evan supposed to be? 
Come on. Oh, come on, the Queensland oh, Police sent down a description. Must have a height there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 190 centimetres. Oh, mate. Mate, Bernie said the bloke who bought the ticket was the same height as he was. Now, that station master, he's 180 centimetres. So it wasn't Evans. The lang's wrong. He's dead wrong. Right, uh, here we go. According to the post-mortem, the victim's height was uh, 191. Stoddard, mate, Stoddard. How tall is Stoddard supposed to be? 179. Close, mate, but not close enough. So it's not Stoddard's body we've got. It's Evans. Never did like the little weasel. Oh, you don't even know what it was like. Five years. Always looking over your shoulder. Knowing he was there, coming after you. <laughs> he was better than the coppers. Nearly caught me once, out west it was. I was working in a shop. He come in the front door, I went out the back window. You tell me about the other night. I thought I'd finally lost him. It had been months. No one asking questions. Me, just getting on with me life. The boys had gone up to town. I was up in the shearing quarters. I heard the car drive up. I thought it was them coming back. It was him. He had a gun. I made a break for it. We struggled. He still had the gun. It... went off. No one heard the shot, eh? No. There's no one there to hear the shot. No one even knew he'd come. He said he made sure I was alone. I didn't know what to do. Then it just sort of come to me. I mean, no one would recognise him because of his face. I thought if I could make people think that he was me, make them think that he'd, he'd finally caught up with me. I, I knew they didn't have my fingerprints or his. I thought... Might work. Well, it nearly did, mate. Colleen. Senior Detective Ryan's here. Good honour. Good day. Constable Doyle. Mind him, will you? Uh, Nick. No, mate, not a word from you. He's all mine. So you're back. Oh, a couple of things to sort out. Bit of new information. Quack, oh. So you're on top of things then, are you? More or less. Good on you. What's your, uh, what's your new information? There's a bit of a discrepancy with some of the details. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, me and the junior constable here, we've, um... we figured that out ourselves. It's not Stoddart's body, is it? It's too tall. If you've any further information... No, it's not Stoddart's body, it's Evans. Stoddart killed Evans. There's that for starters. Maybe we could talk inside. <laughs> I don't think so, Bridget, old mate. Out here is just fine. Now, of course, you know that Evans was chasing Stoddart for years and years and years, and he finally found him. But Stoddart fought back, and he killed Evans. But then Stoddart had this bright idea that he could fool you, Ryan of Homicide, into thinking that he was the victim. But I know you, uh, you didn't fall for that, did you? Are you done? No, <laughs> nearly. Nearly there. I can tell by the look on your face that you know who Stoddart is and you know where we can find him. We're still investigating. Ha! <laughs> the bumpkin squad isn't. Remember that shearer Des Lang? He didn't want to interview you? He's also known as Barry Arthur Stoddart. 
Do you want to go in there and arrest him? Or shall I do it? Now, you had to see it, boss, the look on her face. She couldn't believe it. You're not bad for a bunch of dumb country cops, eh, PJ? Yes, I don't think you've made too many friends at Homicide, matey. And you're not going to actually tell me that people like Scarlett and Ryan. It's not a matter of like, Nick, it's a question of respect. I still don't know why you let her take the arrest. We solved it. Adzo, in six months' time, who's going to remember that it was me, with a bit of help from you and your grey you, who solved it, eh? No one except Ryan. Now, maybe next time she'll respect me a bit. If there is a next time. It's a bit of a shame I was growing used to your chair, boss. I wouldn't get too used to it. It'd be a while before I go away again. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't get used to calling you, boss, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are two important lessons in this, Nick. There we are. What are they? Yeah, well, the first one is you've got a result, and that's what we always aim for. Yeah, and the second? It's your shout. <laughs>